One last example um, I'd like to go through. Uh, you guys are definitely going to want to write this one down because it is going to be a couple steps, and I am going to go through some examples and um, description of this. So make sure you have it in there. Okay. All right. I was going to stand up, Missed it. We, we tried, but then it was we really awkward. Oh, shoot, that was the chocolate. That was oh, it. Was I was getting my paper out. Yeah, okay, it's all right. It's okay. We walked in like a window. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> Damn. You guys all talk. Uh -huh. I was going to say, oh, I was lying. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> all right, let's just go through this problem real quick. So in this problem, what I have is A equals 60 degrees, A equals 9, and C equals 10. So... What I'll do is I'll just create a triangle here, kind of see what it looks like. 60 degrees, A equals 9. We'll say here's B, here's C, um, so C is going to be 10. All right? Now, so what we first want to do uh, with this problem is obviously go ahead and take a look at um, what our, uh, use our law of signs to be able to figure out what the angle of C is going to be. So I have 9 over the sine of 60 equals 10 over the si or 10 over the sine of c. So everybody can get to this point, right Elizabeth? Yes. Okay, it's pretty basic and then we can solve for the sine of c. So we could say the sine of c equals uh, 10 times the sine of 60 divided by 9. <laughs> okay. What for? Yeah, how do they make up these a equals sine over a We'll go through on the part of the thing. I know, right? Like, how do they figure out that, like, e equals mc squared? So now you're just going to take the sine of 60, times it by, times it by 10, divide it by 9, and what you have, and then you take the inverse sine of that value. Sorry. So you have sine of C equals, let me do this again for you, 60 sine times 10 divided by 9. You're going to get C equals 0 0.962250. Okay? Now, to find what C is, you do C equals sine inverse of 0 0.962250. Does everybody understand that to find the angles? You have to apply it. And that's huh? going to work right before yeah, that's what you were supposed to do even on your homework last night. Now I do the inverse of that and I say C equals 74.21. Uh, okay? So now I have C equals 74.21 degrees. But ladies and gentlemen, this is getting a little bit more difficult than just doing this one problem. So what you're going to look at is, all right, it could be 74.21. But what I want you guys to understand is let's go back to our unit circle. And let's look at two angles. Let's look at pi over 6, and let's look at 5 pi over 6. All right? Now, notice the reference angle. These are both pi over 6 off of the x-axis, right? Right? Now, let's take a look at our coordinate points. This is square root of 3 over 2, comma, 1 half. This is negative square root of 3 over 2, comma, 1 half. What do you guys notice? Do you notice that for each of these angles, pi over 6 and 5 pi over 6, the, the sign is exactly the same, correct? Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Sign is exactly the same. So when you're finding the inverse of, of an, if you're finding the inverse of a value, you could possibly, for sign, you have two positive answers. So there might be two positive solutions. So let's go and take a look then of what would be, if this is 74 degrees, what could be a possible other solution? So to find that, I could say C equals... 180 minus 74.21. Again, what I'm doing is I'm taking 180, subtracting my set my angle to be able to find the other possible angle. We're going to get to that in just a second. So I add 180. So one, we take 180, and that's going to equal 105. Point seven nine. So what I'm trying to tell you guys, if you look at, take this, take this for example. If you guys take the sine of 74.21, 
Okay, so 74.21 sine is 0.9622. Then Attention take the sine. All remaining juniors who have not been screened for vision screening may go to the media center this time. Again, all remaining juniors who have not been screened for vision screening may go to the media center this time. Thank you. Okay. So what I'm trying to say, ladies and gentlemen, is when you take the inverse sine, there's two possible answers. You could have 74.21 degrees, or you could have 105.79 degrees. If you want to check that, take the sine of 105.9 or 79. You're going to get 0.96225. Take the sine of 74.21. You're going to get 0.96225. Why do they same work? Because exactly what I said here. What's the sine of pi over 6? 1 half. What's the sine of 5 pi over 6? 1 half. So they both have the same value, right? Now we're just dealing with some decimals and some angles that are not the same. But now we have 74 degrees. So we're saying the sine of 74 degrees is exactly the same as the sine of 105 degrees. Does that kind of make sense? So we need to make sure we include both solutions. And now we've got to see, can both answers work? Can both of those answers work? Yes? Why don't we have Because so your calculator is just going to give you that positive solution. It's not going to work with the reference angle of the other one. Okay? Because it's not going to give you both solutions. It's just going to give you that one positive small solution. Well what it's doing is just giving you the re really the reference angle solution for there. So so now we have two possible solutions. Yes? Um, so the pi over six and five pi over six were just an example. They didn't have, they don't have anything to do with the problem. No, I was just kind of showing you why when okay. signs equal to each other. So I was like, well where did you get that from? Okay. So now let's just make sure that these two problems work. So let's do case number one. So if I said case number one, I'm saying A equals 60. And then I could say C equals 74.21. So therefore, what does B have to equal? Well, it equals what? Well, let's just do 180 minus 74.21 minus 60. And equals 45. He said one. Well, no, B equals 45.79. That's case number one. If we did case number two, what we're saying for case number two, A still equals 60 degrees. But now I'm saying C, rather, because remember, C could be 74 or it could be 105. It could be either one. So let's say, what if C equals 105? 0.79 degrees. Then what would B equal? Well, let's see if this will work. So I could do 180 minus 105.79 degrees minus 60. Therefore, in this case, C is going to equal 14.21. These are all degrees. OK, so first of all, the thing you guys need to understand is we can have multiple answers for C, right? because our signs is exactly the same. Yeah. Then what I do is I just subtracted these from 180. So if sine, if C is 74.21, that means B is 45.79. If C is 105.79, that means C is 14.21 degrees. All right? So let's go back and let's take a look. See, for this triangle, does that kind of make sense? Well, if this is 60 degrees, and then I could say C is going to be 74.21, and then B is 45 degrees. All right, so I didn't draw my triangle perfect, but you guys kind of have an idea. It kind of looks similar, similar, right? Let's go and take a look at, so that's case number one. Let's go and take a look at case number two. What would a triangle look like if, what would my triangle look like if I still had A was 60 degrees, um, but now my C is 14, but now, um, or my B. But now B is 14.5, and C is going to be 105 degrees. So let's pretend it's going to be something bigger, like 105 degrees. So now it's 105 degrees, and we'll call C kind of something like that. Why are you changing? Here, I mean. All you need to understand is this could be a, here, let's say that's 60, right? Then it could look something like that. 
Okay, so this is 105 degrees, and then this is 14.21. So you have C, A, and B. Do you guys see how these are exactly the same triangles? But now, rather than having C be 74.21, now it's a obtuse angle, so it's going to be greater than 90, so it's going to be like 105 degrees. So therefore, your B is obviously has to be smaller. But you guys see how there's two? I know I like my triangles aren't like to shape or form, but you guys can see how there's two possible solutions. There's two cases. So this is case number case number two. In case number two, we're saying A equals 60 degrees, C equals 105.79, and B equals 14.21. So when we have two cases, there's two possible solutions. What we need to do is now find the rest of the information for both of them. So when we look at this one, um, we're given, we already know what A is, but we don't know what B or what C are. So we need to use the law of sines again. So I can just use um, A over sine of 60 degrees equals, uh, we're going to have, or sorry, that's 9, sorry. 9 over sine of 60 is going to equal B over, yes? The remaining angles. We don't know what B is, and we, but we know what 10 is. Or we know C equals 10, right? We can't use the Pythagorean theorem unless you have a right triangle, right? So that's why you have to go back to using the law of sines. Yes? No, we, well, we, we found, when we found C, we found there's two possible answers for C. It could be 74.21, or it could be 105. There's two possible answers for it, all right? So then, if there's two possible answers, that means your third angle is also going to be different, okay? Yeah. Because look it, you can see, I can, re, I can draw a triangle with A, B, and 60, B, or a being 9, B being, or C being 10, but them, being, but them with having the same angles but with, and the same sides, but just one being an obtuse angle and then one being an acute. Okay, So it's possible for me to draw a triangle with an acute and an obtuse, but with the same information up and given. That's what I said. When you guys have a side-side angle, there's three options. I showed you when there's no triangle that can be formed. We did last class period, we worked on ones where there's only one triangle formed. And today we're working, we're seeing when there's two triangles can be formed. All right? So now the only last remaining information I don't know is what B is. So I just go and solve for B. So B equals 9 times sine of 45.7 divided by the sine of 60 degrees. And then here I need to figure out what B is. So I could use either the same ratio or I could use a different ratio. Um, let's just use the ratio for C. So I can do 10 over the sine of 105 degrees equals B over the sine of 14.21. Notice how sine of B is different in for each one of these. So therefore, in this case, B equals 10 times sine of 14.21 divided by the sine of 105 degrees. So let's go and figure out what each value of B is. Because for each triangle, B is going to be different. So I have 45.7 sine times 9 divided by 60 sine. And I get, in this case, B is equal to 7.44. Okay. So for in this triangle, in case number 1, I say 7.44. And let's, let's look at it. Does that kind of make sense? Well, at 60 degrees, my sine length is 9. right? At 74 degrees, my sine length is 10. So if my angle B is smaller than all, three, all those other two angles, then length B should be smaller than, right? Does that kind of make a little sense? OK. So now, if I give an angle 14.21, do you think my new B is going to be larger or smaller than 7.44? Should be smaller. So let's go and take a look, see if we did the math correctly. So I do 14.21 um, sine of that times 10 divided by 105 sine. And I get B equals 2.541. And there you go. There's two possible answers.